Good evening and welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Amanda Bowen. We're going to get headed straight into the weather tonight because there's a lot to talk about. We have a coastal flood watch in effect for the Bristol Bay area for Sunday. We have a strong low pressure system that's going to be moving into the area. So strong winds are expected along the coast and that wind is going to push water up against the coastlines for Sunday night into Monday with that high tide that happens late Sunday night or Monday morning. So water levels could rise as much as two to four feet above the grass line for these areas between Togiak and Port Hyden. Again, that's gonna be with the high tide Sunday evening or Monday morning. Coastal flood watch in effect from the Anchorage Forecast Office. You can find the latest at their website, weather.gov slash Anchorage, and we'll of course keep you updated here on the show if this gets updated to a coastal flood warning, we'll let you know. With this system, we're also looking at a wet and windy weekend for pretty much the entire Gulf Coast, but one of the main focus areas is also going to be the Anchorage Bowl, where that same low pressure system is going to create some strong winds. So the graphic here shows pretty much all of the Anchorage Bowl can expect gusts up to about 30 miles per hour on Saturday evening through Sunday night. And Turnigan arm winds are going to be the strongest with gusts up to about 60 miles per hour along Turnigan arm and in the upper hillside area of Anchorage. So if you're in this area, make sure that you're aware of these winds and take any precautions necessary to make sure that you don't have outdoor items that blow around or anything like that. So we're going to go back to this when we get to our surface charts. But for now, let's go ahead and look at what's happening today with our satellite imagery. We can see a low pressure system circulating counterclockwise in the Aleutians today, as well as another one in the Panhandle. That one in the Aleutians is actually rather strong, especially for this time of year. The one in the Panhandle is going to be dissipating and diminishing today. And then over the mainland, we can see some clouds probably associated with some convection there, some possible thunderstorms over the eastern interior, but also a lot of clear skies today with dry weather for the mainland. Looking at our service chart for today, we see that strong low in the Aleutians, 986 millibars with its full frontal system, occluded front, warm front, and cold front making its way through the Aleutians today. We see that isolated thunderstorms in the interior, right where we see that uh, group of clouds over the eastern interior is where we can expect some isolated thunderstorms this afternoon and evening. And that weaker low off the panhandle bringing showers into the panhandle today. For tonight, mostly quiet over the mainland with fog developing from the Yukon River, from the mouth of the Yukon River, all the way to the border up the Yukon River through the Yukon Flats, as well as for the North Slope, Chukchi Sea Coast, and the West Coast of the state tonight. Dry for the southern tier of the state, but we do have rain moving into the Bristol Bay and Alaska Peninsula areas tonight. Could even see some heavy rain across the Alaska Peninsula tonight. Some showers continuing over the southern panhandle tonight as well as that low pressure there continues to weaken, but the one in the Aleutians will continue to strengthen down to 981 millibars tonight. For Saturday, we have that low in the Aleutians, 979 millibars for Saturday, so continuing to strengthen and bringing plenty of rain and showers starting to spread up into southwestern Alaska. We also have a second low just south of that one, also fairly strong at 981 millibars. We'll see on Sunday what happens with these 
but I'll give you a little hint. They're going to strengthen uh, quite a bit between Saturday and Sunday. So again, isolated thunderstorms potential for the central interior with showers for much of the mainland on Saturday and showers continuing for the panhandle on Saturday. Now Sunday, this is gonna be our big weather day. We have one very strong for this time of year, low pressure system, 968 millibars sitting right in that Bristol Bay area. So what this is gonna mean is we have southerly winds on the east side of that low. That's what's gonna be causing those gusty winds in the Anchorage Bull. Those winds are also going to come up into the Alaska range. So southerly winds through the Alaska range means we're going to have some very strong winds through the Alaska passes and the highways that go through the Alaska range. We're expecting winds potentially as high as 70 mile per hour gusts through the Alaska Range passes on Sunday as this strong low pressure system comes on shore. We'll also have those strong winds in the Bristol Bay area that we talked about earlier that are going to be creating that potential for coastal flooding as well as coastal erosion in the Bristol Bay area. North of this low, we have fog continuing for the west coast as well as the north slope. Some dry conditions temporarily across the Yukon River in the interior with rain stretching all the way from the low in the Bristol Bay area through south central, the north gulf, and into the panhandle. Now, some areas are going to see quite a lot of rain, especially the eastern Kenai and the Prince William Sound area, we're expecting anywhere from one to about three inches of rain in a 24 to 36 hour period. So expect significant rises on rivers in those areas, but we don't actually expect any river flooding at this point. The Panhandle will also be fairly wet, although as a preview of something that we'll talk about tomorrow, it looks like that's going to be mostly focused into Monday with this system for the Panhandle. So stay tuned for updates on this system as well as continuing impacts going forward after Sunday. Taking a look at temperatures, we have pretty seasonable lows, maybe a little bit cooler than usual, expected for Saturday morning with upper 40s to around 50 in the Panhandle and then 40s across most of the interior. Some upper 30s, so a little bit cooler, for parts of the central interior along the Yukon River and mid to upper 30s for the North Slope on Saturday morning. Saturday afternoon, temperatures around 60 to the low 60s for much of the interior and south central with around 60 for the Panhandle and some 50s for the West Coast. Sunday morning, temperatures may be a couple of degrees warmer Sunday morning than Saturday morning. That may be because those winds are going to stay up more Sunday morning and higher winds means usually a couple of degrees warmer. And then for Sunday afternoon, temperatures pretty similar to what we saw on Saturday afternoon. But again, Sunday is going to be our big action day as far as winds and potential coastal flooding. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to aviation weather, starting with your flying weather for Saturday morning, IFR conditions for the northern tier of the state north of the Brooks Range, as well as the Bering Strait area down through about St. Lawrence Island. Also IFR conditions for much of the southern Bering with the Aleutians and the southern Alaska Peninsula. IFR conditions also for the higher terrain of the southern Panhandle on Saturday morning. For Saturday afternoon, we are looking at improvement for much of the northern part of the state to MVFR north of the Brooks Range, with some IFR still hanging on around the immediate coastline of the North Slope area. IFR also holding on around St. Lawrence Island and for the southern bearing through the western Aleutians. IFR developing Saturday afternoon with an approaching storm system for the east side of Kodiak Island stretching eastward into the northern Gulf. For Sunday morning, again IFR for that area north of the Brooks Range, as well as IFR south of St. Lawrence Island down to about St. Matthew Island, as well as the southern portion of the Bering through the Aleutians and the southern Alaska Peninsula. 
IFR conditions also Sunday morning for the eastern gulf and the higher terrain of the panhandle. We'll see some patchy IFR conditions from Bristol Bay to the western Alaska Range, eastern Kenai, and parts of the Prince William Sound area. For Sunday afternoon, we still see those patchy areas over the southern portion of the state and MVFR developing across the YK Delta and much of the Alaska Range and points south down through the Gulf. Improvement over much of the southern bearing though to MVFR Sunday afternoon. Pass conditions on Saturday, MVFR at Anaktuvik Pass and Adigan Pass starting MVFR and improving to VFR on Saturday afternoon. Lake Clark and Merrill Passes both starting the day Saturday VFR and deteriorating to MVFR Saturday afternoon. Rainy Pass expected to be VFR all day as well as Windy Pass, but at Windy Pass we do expect isolated thunderstorms developing Saturday afternoon. Also isolated thunderstorms Saturday afternoon at Isabel Pass, but with VFR conditions through the day outside of those thunderstorms. Mentasta Pass VFR on Saturday, as well as Tanita Pass VFR on Saturday. Portage Pass starting the day Saturday VFR, but deteriorating to MVFR Saturday afternoon. And Chilkoot and White Passes both expected to be VFR, I'm sorry, MVFR that is, through the day on Saturday. Freezing levels, we have a couple of areas of warmer air coming up from the south, one into the Gulf, bringing freezing levels eight to 10,000 feet through the Northern Gulf from the Alaska Peninsula across to the Panhandle. And the second one coming up south of the Aleutians. So over the Aleutians, we'll have around 8,000 foot freezing levels, except for the Western Aleutians, a little bit cooler air, 6,000 foot freezing levels there. Also 6,000 foot freezing levels across most of the mainland with the exception of 4,000 foot freezing levels over the Northwest North Slope areas around Ukiakvik. Icing on Saturday, quite a lot of isolated moderate icing for the central interior portions of the state above about 6,000 feet, stretching across the Bristol Bay area and into the Kenai Peninsula above about 8,000 feet and also above 8,000 feet for the southern panhandle. Jet stream winds on Saturday, our main jet is going to be south of the Aleutians going from generally west to east from about 100 to 135 knots, so a pretty strong jet there. A secondary jet south of the Panhandle going from northwest to southeast, 80 to 115 knots there. 9,000 foot winds on Saturday. We've got our low over the Aleutians with our highest winds both south and north of that low. South of the Aleutians, we're looking at 40 to 45 knots out of the northwest. And north of that low in the central Bering Sea, we're looking at 45 to 50 knots out of the east. For 3,000 foot winds, that same low pressure with the same wind pattern, the strongest winds both south of the Aleutians and north of that low into the central bearing. So south of the Aleutians, we're looking at westerly flow, 40 to about 50 knots, also 40 to about 55 knots on the north side of that low out of the east. Turbulence on Saturday, we've got a big area of considerable moderate turbulence that we're expecting. So everywhere from the eastern Aleutians up into the Bristol Bay area, expect considerable moderate turbulence below 4,000 feet, also below 4,000 feet for the Western Aleutians and below 6,000 feet for the Southern Panhandle. Hello and welcome to this edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Carrie Hazley, Chief of the Emergency Services and Multimedia Branch for the National Weather Service in Anchorage. With me today I have Dr. Doug Wesley, a physical scientist for the National Weather Service Alaska Region Headquarters. Doug, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome, Carrie. Hello. Hello. So you're here to talk to us a little bit about something called COCORAS which is the Community Collaborative Rain, Hail, and Snow Network. And I understand that Coco Raz is a network of volunteers who take weather observations. Can you tell us a little bit more about what Coco Raz is? Yes, it, it began in the lower 48, oh, 20, 20 some years ago. And it's, it's expanded during those two decades. Uh, they're getting something like 10 to 15,000 rainfall reports per day from the lower 48. Wow, that's a lot of different reports. So how many reports do we get in Alaska right now? Well, you know, it varies uh, 
maybe 10 to 25. Uh, but if you consider the large areas we're talking about, uh, we have a lot of gaps to fill. Uh, you know, any observation is better than no observation, but um, there are large areas in Alaska. Alaska covers uh, three, 3 million square miles. There's a lot of data gaps in that space. So we'd like to enhance it. Sure. So tell us then a bit about why these observations are so important to Alaska and, and why we need to expand the number of them that we're getting. Yes, Alaska, as, as you know, has large areas with a lot of complex terrain and there are no weather ob observing stations or radar. So COCORAS can help fill the data gaps uh, so you can at least get some idea of what's actually falling from the sky at those locations. COCORAS increases the amount of timely weather, weather observations available to meteorologists and other decision makers, especially in hazardous type of weather, uh, both rain and snow and, and, and the occasional hailstorm that we get up here. Uh, COCORAS observations can help forecasters identify long-term precipitation and snowfall trends in, in a climate sense. And just overall, they increase the amount of timely weather observations available to the public. So then let's talk a little bit about each of the different types of observations. So it's the rain, hail, and snow network. So let's start by talking a little bit about rain observations and tell us a little bit about how you take those and how long it takes a volunteer to get a rain observation. Okay, this is a four inch gauge, uh, just, uh, just the basic gauge, which you use for both rain and snowfall. Um, but the rain observations are, are pretty quick. It's a matter of two or three minutes that each volunteer goes out and takes a reading. And then uh, they enter these on the computer and they're immediately available uh, for, for observation on the computer um, and on the maps so that you can see, see your report. The, in the wintertime, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, we require the observers to measure not only the snow accumulation, but also the liquid equivalent. So they've got to melt the snowfall. This involves two of these gauges and a snowboard. And it's, you know, it, it's uh, maybe a 10 minute observation per day during the winter. But the snowfall is so variable that uh, even across town and, and in especially remote areas, it's, uh, it's crucial that we increase this, this number of snow observations in the network. Right. I understand that we can only take observations in places where we have weather service offices. And so we rely on all of these volunteers to help us fill gaps. And it, it's also interesting to know how snowfall varies across like large spaces or even small cities. So I noticed here in Anchorage, for example, we can have a vastly different amount of snow on the east side of town and the west side of town. And so it seems like these observations would help us to better understand what's going on in places besides just where the office is. That's correct. Uh, you know, in any given snowfall, there are, there are typically large variances, as you know. And, uh, you know, we rely on reports from the public and from, from National Weather Service cooperative spotters to, to uh, map out the snowfall that occurs so that we can predict it better in the future. Sure. So we talked about rain observations and we talked about snow observations. And you said for each of those, um, if it's rain, it only takes a couple of minutes and then it can take about 10 minutes if it's snow. Hail was the other one that we didn't talk about yet. Tell us just a little bit about the hail observations that Kokoraz observers take. Yeah, the Kokoraz network, um, it, it has a hail pad and it's just a simple uh, block of styrofoam covered with aluminum foil. And you can approximate the size of hail by measuring the, the dent that the hail causes on the pad. And this can give us an estimate of hail size. It, we don't get hail very often in Alaska, but I've seen it two or three times in my five years in Anchorage and, uh, and some of it up to a half inch. Uh, and I'm sure there's been larger hail up in the interior at times. So let's talk a little bit about how these uh, rain, hail, and snow observations can help forecasters. So we have people who forecast the weather, and we also have people who work on the hydrology side. And I can see that maybe Kokoraz would be beneficial to both of them. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yes, uh, it's beneficial to, to the hydro hydrologic forecaster who's concerned about flooding and uh, rainfall is a, is comprises uh, uh, one of the causes of a flood, and, or it can exacerbate high water conditions. So the more the hydrologist has to look at in terms of data from recent rainfall, 
the more information they have to work with when they're generating forecast. Um, you know, the, the weather forecasters in the wintertime uh, at the Weather Service office can use these observations also to, to help with past case studies, to, to verify model data, and to get a handle on, on what's actually happening out the window. And that's important in the forecast process. Yeah, it seems like you can never have too much information when you're, you're issuing a forecast. So it only takes a few minutes most of the time to take these observations. So let's say I'm interested in becoming a volunteer for Cocoraz. How do I get involved? Yeah, the, the website is very useful, cocoraz.org, and uh, it has a number of video-based uh, training um, tutorials that take you right on from, from measuring rainfall to a video tutorial on measuring snowfall. Um, it, it has the maps available in real time, and you can go back and look at that, that old data, too, through those maps. And so it's a very useful, comprehensive website. Very interesting. And anybody can get involved, right? You don't have to be a meteorologist. That's right. And, you know, we, we love to have 24, uh, well, once a day reports throughout the year. But if you can't, then, then so be it. And uh, we have observers. Some observers are out of town for periods of time or... Um, maybe maybe they, they can only re report, uh, you know, a week or two of precipitation, but it's still useful. It's still data that we look at. So uh, the more the better, but, but you can get involved even if you, you aren't at a location 24-7. Uh, Doug, I really appreciate you coming on to our program today to talk about Coco Raz. Hopefully we can have you back in the studio at some point so we can talk more about it and then talk more about the different types of observations and the tools that observers use. Um, that would be great, yeah. So thank you for your time and thank you so much for joining this edition of Alaska Weather Facts. And now, Marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back for a look at your marine forecast. Starting with the sea ice edge, we've zoomed in on the Arctic today because that's the only place where we have any ice left. And the at ice is going to continue to melt over the coming days and week. With consistent northeasterly winds, we expect the ice edge to push southwest just a little bit, but still not enough to make it back into any of the Alaska waters. So expect that ice to remain pretty far north and continue to melt. Taking a look at winds and seas for southeast for Saturday, we've got 10 to 20 knot winds generally out of the south and west across the board for Saturday. Strongest winds in the northern Gulf as well as the Lynn Canal area at about 20 knots out of the southeast in both of those locations. Heading into Sunday, we'll see this start to increase as we have our low pressure starting to move into the Gulf. So we've got winds 30 knots across the Gulf and 20 to 30 knots for the inside waterways likely see some gales for the Gulf as well as potential gales for Lynn Canal on Sunday. Saturday for South Central, some gales expected for the West Gulf with easterlies at about 35 knots, seas there 10 to 13 feet. Elsewhere in the Gulf, 20 to 30 knots out of the east and southeast, 20 knots out of the east in Prince William Sound and 10 to 20 knots out of the northeast for Cook Inlet. Heading into Sunday, we'll generally see those winds increase again as that strong low pressure system approaches the Bristol Bay area. 30 knots out of the south and southeast for most of the Gulf, 25 knots out of the east for Prince William Sound, and 15 to 25 knots out of the northeast for Cook Inlet. For the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island, this is exactly where that low pressure is going to be moving over on Sunday. So starting on Saturday, we'll still have some strong winds, some gales in the area, 25 to 35 knots out of the east and south in general. Seas 10 to 11 feet on the Gulf side. But as we go into Sunday, we have 
very strong winds, looks like storms anywhere from 35 to 50 knots out of the south and southwest, except Bristol Bay looks like out of the southeast for Bristol Bay at 45 knots. With those strong winds, we'll also see high seas, 14 to about 24 feet on the Gulf side of the peninsula and about 14 to 16 feet with those strong winds on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula. For the Aleutians, starting with some high level small craft advisory or low level gales on Saturday out of the south and west, 30 knots on the south side and about 25 knots on the north side, 12 to 15 feet on the south side on Saturday, 7 to 10 feet on the north side of the chain. Going into Sunday, we start to see some of those strongest winds. For the eastern Aleutians is where the strongest winds are going to be. 50 knots on Sunday, so storm force winds out of the southwest. Decreasing a bit as we head into the central Aleutians, 25 to 35 knots, but still strong winds there out of the west and southwest. Seas building as high as about 25 feet uh, for the south side of the eastern Aleutians and still about 11 to 15 feet for the western Aleutians. For the west coast on Saturday, this is going to be kind of the calm before the storm, but still not very calm. For the southern bearing, we'll see 30 knots out of the east and decreasing as we head north to about 15 knots out of the east for Norton Sound. All of this increasing a bit on Sunday. We have those strongest winds in Bristol Bay, but even north of there off the Kuskokwim Delta, 40 knots out of the east with 11 foot seas. And in the central bearing, 30 knot winds out of the north and northeast with eight to 12 foot seas. The Arctic coast is where we will see little change between Saturday and Sunday. So 15 to 20 knots for the North Slope and 25 to 30 knots for the Chukchi Sea. Pretty consistent into Sunday, 20 knots out of the east for the North Coast and 25 to 30 knots out of the Northeast for the Chukchi. Tonight is not our big weather night. We've got rain in the Aleutians and showers in the Panhandle with fog developing across the inland areas. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.